All right, students, welcome to the notes on types of reactions. Again, you can pause this video. You could scrub backwards if you need to. How can I recognize the five types of chemical equations? Let's go ahead and get started. Now, in this unit, you just need to be able to recognize the five types of reactions. So you need to know what they are, but you also need to be able to, if given one of these reactions, be able to recognize them. Now, you could write a lot of reactions. You just need to recognize which of the type of reactions you're writing. Now, there's Composition or synthesis reactions, that's the first type. There's decomposition, there's single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. I really recommend pulling out your periodic table because on the back, you should have this reactions type area. Now, at first glance, this might seem super complicated, but we're going to go ahead and be able to use this to recognize those reactions. Please note that this is supposed to help you be able to write the reactions as well as recognize them. So there might be some extra information on there that, you, that might go above and beyond what we need. But let's go ahead and get started. The first type of reaction is called a composition reaction. I really recommend pulling out some colors, some colored pens, so that way our brain really works to, to learn this. But a composition or a synthesis reaction is where two reactants combine to form one product. So here we have our yellow reactant and our blue reactant, and they smash together to form a new product, that's the green reactant. Now one thing to note, you're not just taking two things and setting them next to each other. Sometimes they rearrange to form something new, so just realize that it's not just going to be red or yellow next to blue. They're going to be intermingled and mixed. So let's get an example here. And here I put our piece of a periodic table in the upper left-hand corner. Here is our two irons plus oxygen gives us two iron oxide. So really, we have iron, which is one of our reactants. We have oxygen, which are, is another reactant. And then that gives us iron oxide. If you look at our example up at the top left, that's where we have our, our element plus element. And that makes a compound. It's the simplest type of synthesis reaction. Now the other one is calcium oxide plus water gives us calcium hydroxide. So we're not just smashing together elements, we might be smashing together compounds. So here's calcium oxide, that's a metal oxide, and water gives us calcium hydroxide. So that's kind of our second example up here at the top, that's this one, which is what's going on. A metal oxide and water are kind of coming together to make a metal hydroxide. So these are called synthesis or composition reactions. It's two things coming together to form one new thing. The opposite of a synthesis or composition reaction is a decomposition reaction. This is where we're only going to start with one reactant, and it's going to break apart to form two products. So that's a big hint. If you only have one thing as a reactant, the only thing it can do is break apart because there's nothing else it can interact with. So let me give you a few examples here. Here is potassium carbonate forms potassium oxide and carbon dioxide. So that, if we look at our synthesis and decomposition reaction, notice that up here that the arrows go both ways. So the arrows are going both ways. Now in this example, we're specifically looking for the arrows that are starting on the right and going to the left. So that's what we want to see. So here we have our metal carbonate is going to metal oxide and carbon dioxide. So our first example is this one right here. Now we also have, um, we have mercury oxide, and that decomposes to form mercury and oxygen. So that's just our element element. That's our compound breaking apart into two elements. So it's going in that direction. So watch out for those. The synthesis and decomposition are just equal but opposites to each other. All right, single replacement is our third type of reaction. Now, this is kind of like a dance. I think of it as a partnership. So here are two partners dancing with each other, and then we have a wallflower. Now that wallflower can choose to go and dance with one of the two partners, depending on the charge is what that happens. If this circle here is a negative charge, it's gonna go dance with a positive, but if it's a positive charge, it's gonna go dance with a negative. So this is just a single element replacing another element in a different compound. So here are two examples of this. So here we have aluminum, which is our single element, and then we have iron to nitrate, which is our compound. Now aluminum is going to go and replace that iron. You can see here that aluminum goes and says, hey, nitrate, can I have this dance? And then iron goes away and becomes a wallflower. So here we have the new partnership and then our new wallflower. It's called a single replacement reaction. Same thing, sodium iodide and, fl and fluorine gas. Fluorine is going to come and replace the iodine because fluorine is a different charge. So it's going to replace the second object and iodine is going to come and become a wallflower. So there's our new partnerships. The third one is a 
double replacement reaction. These are where ions of each compound exchange places. This is very similar to a single replacement reaction, only this time we have two sets of partnerships changing. In this specifically, C is going to go and be with B, and D is going to go and be with A. So they kind of do this partnership switch. So A goes with D, and C goes with B. Notice we always have the positive charge in the beginning. So here's a couple double replacements. Here we have lead and nitrate and then potassium and iodine. So lead and iodine are going to go and be with each other. And then potassium and nitrate are going to go be with each other. So that's a double replacement reaction. Same thing down here. Iron's going to be with chlorine and hydrogen's going to be with sulfur. And so that's how they switch. It's called a double replacement reaction. The last one is combustion reaction. This is where a fuel combines with oxygen to release carbon dioxide and water. Now this one's really easy. Just look at the products. If the products are carbon dioxide and water, and then we have some form of C and H, this is our fuel, it's called the hydrocarbon. So some form of CH substance is a fuel. It combines with oxygen and it always forms carbon dioxide and water. Those are always the products that we deal with. That is a combustion reaction. All right, let's see if we can recognize the types of reactions we have here. So here we have potassium hydroxide for, forms potassium oxide and water. That is one thing breaking off into two. That's a decomposition reaction. In the second thing, we have our single wallflower, that's chlorine, and then we have a compound. And that wallflower goes and replaces one of the products in there. That is known as a single replacement reaction. Here we have two elements and they combine to form one thing. That is a composition reaction. Finally, we have a two, two separate compounds. So here's sodium hydroxide and we have hydrogen and chlorine. So that's hydrochloric acid. Sodium goes with chlorine, hydrogen goes with hydroxide. That is a double replacement reaction. Now, lastly, we see we have our fuel, some combinations of C's, H's, and maybe O's, oxygen, and we always form carbon dioxide and water. That is combustion. All right, that is all we have in terms of notes. We'll see you guys next time.